Hello and good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Irish Studies lecture. Um, one remark before we start, um, the lecture here will be recorded, will be videotaped, and we will also take screenshots of all those of you who do not want to be seen or heard. Please switch off your cameras and unmute yourselves. Now, I uh, have the pleasure to um, introduce our today's guest speaker, Michelle Zirkel, to you. Michelle is a lecturer, research assistant, and um, assistant, sorry, and PhD student at the University of Bamberg with an interest in global education, inter and transcultural learning, with a focus on Irish studies, as you can assume popular culture and media literacy, particularly web apps and virtual reality in the EFL classroom. She is a member of our Irish Studies, Irish Studies Würzburg, um, and spent several months in Ireland working as a language assistant and participating in an Erasmus Plus project. She actually graduated from our university, the University of Würzburg, with a teacher's degree in English and Spanish. And in her thesis, Zulassungsarbeit, she focused on different ways of teaching Irish culture using various kinds of texts and media, such as songs, EDU apps, comedy sketches, TV series, and a lot more. Michelle, we are more than happy to have you here as our guest lecturer today. So the virtual floor is yours. All right. Thank you so much, Maria, for the kind introduction. And I suggest we dive right in and I'm going to share my screen with you. Right. Can you just give me a quick thumbs up whether you can actually see my screen now? Right, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, so as you've learned by my abstract and also um, this kind introduction, our today's topic is going to be on Northern Irish songs in the EFL classroom. EFL stands for English as a foreign language. And by Northern Irish songs, I mean both songs about Northern Ireland as well as songs by Northern Irish artists. Now, what can you expect to learn from this lecture today? Well, first I will outline the role of Irish studies and music in English language education to you. Then I'll give you an overview of Northern Irish artists and songs about Northern Ireland. And after that, we'll explore how to use songs in the classroom. And finally, we'll get to take a closer look at a selection of Northern Irish songs, their linguistic and literary features, as well as their potential for English language education. But first, I would like to know from you, which songs do you already know? Or maybe also which artists from Northern Ireland do you already know? Now, please open the following link or scan the QR code so we can discover that together. All right, so I can see that you're familiar with quite a few Northern Irish artists already. However, I'm sure you'll get to know even more Northern Irish artists and Northern Irish songs today. Um, Wellerman is actually um, from New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken, but other than that, good job. Lots of Northern Irish artists 
there and let's continue with our presentation. Right, so let's start with the role of Ireland and Irish studies in TEFL, which might be particularly interesting to those of you who did not or do not study English to become teachers, as you might not know what teachers are expected to teach about Ireland in Bavarian schools. Now, first, you should know that Ireland and other English speaking countries, apart from the UK and the US, used to be neglected in um, English as a foreign language classrooms here in Germany. However, currently, Ireland as a topic is included in the curricula of all secondary schools in Bavaria. And the aspects of Irish studies mentioned in the Bavarian curricula comprise um, geography, flora and fauna, environmental issues, the history of Ireland, especially Celtic traces in Ireland, Irish immigration to the US and the troubles. Um, moreover, they include politics, the Irish economy, technological inventions, social and cultural issues, as well as recent developments in Ireland. Now, um, I think it has become quite clear that future teachers of English should know and should teach about Ireland in their classrooms, but why should they do this using music? Well, first of all, it is undeniably true that there is a close relationship between music and language. And um, moreover, songs can have a certain motivational potential since numerous students listen to songs in their spare time. And generally, there is empirical evidence indicating that songs can foster linguistic, social, cultural and communicative skills. And in addition, there have been various studies on the role of music in second language acquisition. And the findings of these studies can be placed into two categories. The first one is recall and memory. So studies have shown that songs have a positive effect on vocabulary recall and memory in general. And the second one is language specific skills. Um, studies have proven that listening to music and EFL teaching can promote language specific skills such as listening discrimination, comprehension, grammatical and lexical competencies and pronunciation. Now, in spite of all these benefits, other studies have shown that only very few songs are used in language learning classrooms, which is why I would like to introduce you to a great variety of Northern Irish songs today, which can be beneficial for language learning. Right. Now, as these studies have shown, we can also use um, songs to foster various language specific skills. However, depending on the song, we can also use them to promote general educational goals and music um, literacy. Now, what does this include? Now, these are the language related skills that we usually tend to foster in um, English classrooms like mediation, listening, reading, writing, speaking, pronunciation, grammatical competence, lexical competence, language awareness, literary literacy, etc. So I'm, um, I'm sure you're familiar with that. And obviously, of course, we can also use songs to promote these skills. And um, in the course of this lecture, we will explore how we can use Northern Irish songs to facilitate, for example, um, language awareness, but also intercultural learning and transcultural learning. Other gener uh, ed uh, general educational goals based on the sustainable development goals developed by the United Nations include critical thinking, education for peace and democracy, mental health literacy, education for social justice, critical environment literacy, gender and equi uh, gender equality and diversity, um, and depending on the content and the topic of each song, we can also foster various of these goals, goals um, with Northern Irish music. And specifically um, in this talk, I would like to show you various songs which we can use for um, to educate our students for social justice, peace and democracy, and of course, again, intercultural learning and empathy. This was mentioned two times because it is both a general educational goal and a language specific goal. Now, my first example um, is about fostering language awareness with Northern Irish music. The Association of Language Awareness defines language awareness as the explicit knowledge about language 
and conscious perception and sensitivity in language learning, language teaching, and language use. This can also include learning about different varieties of English, for example, and the social perception of these varieties. Hence, we could use Northern Irish songs to teach students about the Northern Irish variety of English and how this variety is perceived by other native or non-native speakers. In order to do that, we have to learn a thing or two about the Northern Irish variety of English, of course. And to do that, teachers can use the numerous works by Raymond Hickey on Irish English, for example, or and the website of the British Library, specifically the section on British accents and dialects, where you can click on different varieties of English and listen to native speakers from these areas while also being able to read more about the specific features of these different varieties of English. In addition, if teachers want to use song lyrics of Northern Irish songs in the classroom, they should also know what distinguishes them from other types of texts. Now, most notably, song ly lyrics share many features with other lyrical texts like poems. However, the language of song lyrics is different compared to other text types like poems, for example. Now, what are the linguistic features of some lyrics? <clears throat> Valentin Werner has created a corpus and uh, created and analyzed a corpus of pop songs and came up with the following overview. Now, to sum up this table, song lyrics are a specific type of text with distinct characteristics, such as a special register and a non standard use of vocabulary and grammar. And these irregularities apply to all world class word classes, as you can see here. <clears throat> um, let's take, for example, the use of use, ya yeah, or ye instead of the pronoun you, or them instead of those, them genes instead of those genes, for example, or um, as, uh, the use of contracted semi-model verbs like wanna, gonna, etc. Um, or the use of swear words, slang terms, as well as abbreviations and clippings like cause, trina, bout, etc. Um, now we'll listen to a specific example of a song, a Northern Irish song to be precise, so you can identify these linguistic features. Here. Here, well, what's happening? It's here we rap song goes out to everyone from Belfast and the general area surrounded Belfast, such as uh, Antrim and Ballymena and Macabre as well. All is the whole lot is keeper fucking let. Got lifted last night outside Lavery's. One more fence and it's off the McGavry. Only thing I wanted was to do a bit of dancing. The bouncer knocked me back for wearing a heli handsome. What? Sure, you know what to say. God loves a chancer. Fucking let me in, I won't take no for an answer. The bouncer was raging, it started a fight. The cops pulled up, so I ran like shit. Like shit. I went on the run, but I only got as far as Neary. I had to appear before a judge and a jury. The cops were at my door. Ask him my questions. We're here about your son, he's been done for possession. He's not my son. What are you on about? My ma said nothing cause she wasn't a tout. Fair play. May we brawl has a tag on his ankle. He tried to do a robbery up on the shankle. He right, so I think that's enough to give you a first impression of this song by We Goose, a rapper from Belfast. And I'm sure you have noticed some of the features I've just mentioned in the song, right? So in the lyrics of the song, <laughs> we can find non-standard pronouns like uh, use and clippings like um, happening and um, dancing, what, raging, etc. Contracted forms like lada, bitter, and swear words. I'm not going to read them out now, otherwise <laughs> we might get in trouble here. And slang terms like uh, got lifted instead of got arrested, for example. And there are various, well, the rapper mentions various other slang terms in this song as well. Now, um, what we can do with a song like this is using it to teach about the Northern Irish variety of English by having students analyze the song. And um, yeah, the, the 
a table on the right hand side by Raymond Hickey again might be helpful for teachers as a preparation for this kind of task and have them analyze um, a song like this written by and performed by a singer who has a broad Northern Irish accent and discuss maybe phonological features and slang terms and to understand how native speakers of Belfast English in this case use the English language. But of course, we shouldn't only look at the language of the song, but also at the content of the song. And um, as you heard from this um, clip, I've just shown you the song addresses taboo issues like uh, drug use and addiction, etc. So these are topics that students might be familiar with and should also be addressed in EFL teaching. So this is what we can also do with a song like that. Okay, but obviously there are many other modern Irish artists whose songs teachers can use to foster language awareness and other English language skills, which is why I'm now going to give you an overview of other traditional and contemporary Northern Irish songs. Before I do that, I would like you to do a TikTok challenge with me to find out which of the following Northern Irish songs you already know. Now, these kinds of put a finger down if you know blah, blah, blah um, challenges have been popular on TikTok for a while now. And I have created my own little challenge for you based on the songs mentioned on the next slides. Now, to, partic to participate, I would like you to raise your hands <laughs> and then put a finger do down whenever you do a song. Right? Ready? Let's go. Put a finger down if you know the song. Northern Irish Music Edition. If you know more than eight songs, you're officially Northern Irish. Maria is officially Northern Irish now, <laughs> but not all of us are there yet, but after this presentation, I'm sure all of us are good. 
right. put a finger. Sorry. So um, <laughs> the next few slides serve to give you an overview of the most popular songs by Northern Irish artists, according to statistics on Spotify and Last of Them. Hence, these are all Northern Irish songs learners might be familiar with because they're modern and also famous. And we'll take a closer look at some of these songs later on during the last part of this presentation. The songs printed in blue were the ones we just listened to. And just to mention a few artists you might know, um, Brooke Scullion represented Ireland at this year's Eurovision Song Contest. And Hannah Peel composed the theme song of Game of Thrones, The Last Watch. So that's her, that's uh, Brooke Scullion. And a fun, just a nice fun fact for you to know, Ireland has won the Eurovision Song Contest seven times and holds the record for being the only country to have won the Eurovision Song Contest three times consecutively. And as you can see, the list goes on and Snow Patrol and Stiff Little Fingers, Tudor Cinema Club and Van Morrison might be the most well-known artists on this list. And we're also going to take a, look, a closer look at um, the songs printed in bold later on. So Belfast City, Belfast and Warm Love. Okay, so as I've already told you, one of them who sticks out is Van Morrison because he has won numerous awards and his latest song written for the film Belfast, Down to Joy, was also nominated for various awards. And um, yeah, if you have not seen the film yet, I can also recommend that to you um, to yeah find out more about Belfast's history. Right, another fun fact worth mentioning is that in 2021, Belfast became one of the 59 UNESCO cities of music, celebrating the city's rich musical heritage and recognizing the importance of music to its future. It is the only UNESCO city of music in Ireland, and it is in this context, Snow Patrol's Gary Lightbody and Emmy-nominated composer Hannah Peel officially became Belfast music patrons. And you can see them on the next slide. And Belfast is actually the third city in the UK to become a city of music with uh, Liverpool receiving it in 2016 and Glasgow in 20, uh, 2008, sorry. So uh, Gary Lightbody is the one who has the slightly longer hair than the rest of the group member. Okay, now I've told you a lot about famous modern, uh, modern day Northern Irish artists and about the linguistic features of Northern Irish songs and how we could use them to foster students' language awareness. But what about the content of Northern Irish songs? In, this, in the context of this presentation, I would like to focus on the content of songs about Northern Irish history or Irish history in general, as well as Irish society and cultures, because we can use them to foster intercultural and transcultural learning in the ESL classroom. A specific genre worth mentioning is Northern Irish sea shanties, and I've listed some examples here. Most of them are, of course, about life at sea or even emigration, like, for example, we're all bound to go, leaving loved ones behind, coming back home, and I would argue that these kinds of songs might resonate with students who plan to go on a school exchange or even had to emigrate to another country at some point in their lives, which might be particularly relevant due to so many refugees fleeing war-torn countries and ending up in German classrooms. And maybe even more importantly, because they've become very popular on social media, especially on TikTok, as these screenshots um, from TikTok Illustrate. And it all started with Nathan Evans singing Soon May the Wellerman Come on TikTok in 2021. And since then, numerous content creators have basically jumped on the bandwagon and are using the popularity of these sea shanties to promote their videos and get more people to watch them. Just to give you an impression of what these videos on TikTok look like, I would like to show you one of them. <laughs> All right, boys, one last sea shanty in this house. Let's do it. Well, me father often told me when I was just a lad, a sailor's life is very hard, but food is always bad. But now I joined the Navy aboard a man of war, 
And now I found a sailor, ain't a sailor anymore. Don't haul on the rope, don't climb up the mast. And if you see a sailing ship, it might be a last. Just get your cities ready for another round of shore. A sailor ain't a sailor, ain't a sailor anymore. Right, so uh, in the classroom, you can have students, um, of course, watch this uh, TikTok videos like these ones and have them analyze the linguistic and literary features of these sea shanties and maybe even ask them to sing or at least read out the lyrics like a poem and maybe even pre or create a short video like a TikTok video of them performing these songs. <laughs> Sorry. And as I've mentioned in the abstract for this talk, music is deeply ingrained in Northern Ireland's cultural DNA with numerous scholars illustrating that, and I quote, a range of factors that were specific to Ireland's cultural and political history would lead to a dominant conception of the relationship between music and nation that was at considerable variance with patterns observable elsewhere in Europe. Now, two historic events have basically have drastically shaped Irish history and contemporary society, which are the Great Famine and the ensuing di uh, Irish diaspora, of course, and the Troubles and their repercussions, which are still palpable in today's society. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, but just to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, the Great Famine was caused by a potato blight and resulted in one million deaths the eviction of farmers from their homes due to their inability, inability to pay their rent. Landlord, landlords were often the British and um, yeah, there were appalling conditions in workhouses, which, also led, which were also led mostly by the British. Hence, there was a rise in um, anti-British sentiments and consequently a mass immigration to America, Britain and Canada, and as well as Australia on the so-called coffin ships. Uh, which then engendered the Irish uh, diaspora. Um, and as you can probably guess, there are lots of songs about the Irish feminine and the Irish diaspora. The most famous of them maybe being um, the fairy tale of New York or the fields of Anson Rye, as well as Danny Boy. Um, Danny Boy is the um, sporting anthem of Northern Ireland. And you, yeah, we've already listened to Fairy Tale of New York, and we're going to take a closer look at the fields of Athen Rye during the last part of this presentation again. Uh, as well, sorry. And the fact that Irish fans still sing the fields of Athen Rye at sports events to this day, as you can see um, by looking at the screenshots taken from YouTube. Um, yeah, this, uh, uh, yeah, the, the videos are about Irish fencing the fields of Athen Rye against Spain and um, the Hakka being drowned out by Irish fencing the fields of Athen Rye. And I think this illustrates quite nicely that the famine and the ensuing diaspora still influence modern day society in Ireland. And uh, yeah, which is why I would like to have a closer look at this song specifically during the last part of this presentation. Now, another key event I would like to give you an overview of is the Troubles. I'm sure you're all familiar with this as well, but just to make sure we're all on the same page. In 1998, the Good Friday Agreement was reached, um, which ended most of the violence of the Troubles. And um, on the one side, we had unionists who wanted to keep the union with the UK and were loyal to the crown and they were mostly Protestants. And then on the other side, we had uh, nationalists in favor of joining the Republic of Ireland, uh, most notably the IRA, the Irish Republican Army. And in total, more than 3,600 people were killed and approximately 20,000 were injured. And the repercussions of the troubles are still tangible in Northern Irish society today. We've had a few violent outbreaks and bombings in recent years, and there are still visible divisions between Protestant and Catholic neighborhoods in Northern Ireland, such as, for example, the peace lines in Belfast, which you can see in the picture. 
or also the curb paintings, or road markings, which are visible in some Protestant and Catholic neighborhoods in Northern Ireland. Now, there are quite a few songs about the troubles, which also shows how traumatizing all of this was. And we're going to listen to some of them in a few minutes as well, and most notably caught up by Dan Magill, a rap song. Um, Dan Magill is also from Belfast. And um, yeah, yeah, you might also be familiar with Zombie. <laughs> We've just listened to the song as well. And we're going to take a closer look at There Were Roses by Robbie O'Connor, Mick Maloney and Jimmy King. And of course, the list goes on and on. There are so many of them. You might also be familiar with Sunday, Bloody Sunday by YouTube. Okay, a topic which ties in with these historical events is the relationship between the British and the Irish, which is reflected in the song, The Luck of the Irish, for example, which hints at key events in Irish history, which have been influenced by the British. So as you can see by looking at this excerpt from this, um, from the lyrics of this song, a thousand years of torture and hunger drove the people away from their land. A land full of beauty and wonder was raped by the British brigands. Right. Um, not only this song, but of course, there are other songs like on the last slide, we had one titled Give Ireland Back to the Irish by Wings, which has the same message as well as other Irish rebel songs like Come Out Be Black and Tens. And I think the screenshot taken from the Northern Irish TV series, Dairy Girls, there on the right hand side, illustrates quite nicely this <laughs> relationship between the British and the Irish nowadays. Um, hi, I'm Michelle's cousin James. Why is he making that funny noise? He's English, Orla. That's the way they talk. <laughs> yeah. So um, we can, of course, not only use songs, but also TV series like Dairy Girls to talk about the troubles. Um, and they portray this Irish-British uh, relationship in a slightly less depressing way, I would suggest, than the song. But of course, um, it is worth uh, taking a look at well, as well. Now, how can we use these songs in the EFL classroom then? I created a list of manifold pre, while, and post listening tasks, and I'm not going to read out all of them. This is just a guideline for you when it comes to planning lesson um, and creating your own ideas concerning how you could use these songs in a lesson. And you can read through that later on. One example I wanted to one example I wanted to mention is. Uh, coming up with your own questions on the song, like you could, as a pre-listening task, you could give students song snippets um, and the maybe the title of the song and have them come up with their own questions on the song and aspects they are interested in to get them involved. Or maybe use the music with, uh, video and have them watch parts of the music video without the sound and then guess what the song is about. While listening to the song, students can focus on both the language and the content of the song and do tasks like reading the lyrics or listening to the gist of the song and maybe summarize that for a friend in German. Or they could circle or write down thematic vocabulary. Other typical content related tasks are uh, tick the words, chunks, phrases you hear, or you could have them focus on music and maybe analyze and mimic the stress and intonation and maybe identify the different layers of the song or even singing along. Now, this is, a, this is an example of what a worksheet focusing on music features could look like. So you could ask them, which instruments do you hear? Which adjectives describe the song best? <clears throat> and what do you see when you close your eyes? Where does the story described in the song happen? etc. There are also many creative post listening tasks you can ask students to do after listening to the song, like transferring the lyrics into a different genre, like for example, a short story or a comic, a graphic novel, possibly even using appropriate web apps like Storybird, Little Bird Tales or Beyond or Puppet Paws or Pixton. Um, or maybe imagine the lyrical eye with one of your classmates and then ask them questions and do a role play. 
or you could have them write a letter or give advice to the lyrical eye or change the lyrics, write new verses from a different perspective. There are also other teaching ideas you can use, like for example, well, other than pre while post listening tasks, what else can you do with these songs in the EFL classrooms? You could organize a Northern Irish music project, for example, with a PE teacher and create a unit on tap dancing, including videos of river dance or TikTok videos of the gardeners who also do tap dancing or YouTube videos of Irish dancing flash more. Or you could even, or, and or you could even organize a Kaylee. Um, just to give you a quick impression of what this could look like, I have a video for you. For once I fell in love with a maiden so bewitching Miss Henrietta Bell out of Captain Kelly's kitchen With me too, blue-a-la, me too, blue-a-laddy With me too, blue-a-la, too, blue-a-laddy At the age of seventeen I was apprenticed to a grocer Not far from Stephen's Green where Miss Henry used to go, sir Her manners were sublime, she set my heart at twitching And she invited me to a hooli in the kitchen With me too, blue la me too, blue laddie With me too, blue la too, blue laddie All right. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, as you might also know, studies have shown that motion-based activities are conducive to learning, and according to various studies, this can also create um, a pleasant atmosphere um, in the classroom, which is then also conducive to learning. Hence, this activity also offers potential for English language education. No. Oops, sorry. Or with a music teacher you could organize or sorry, create a unit on Celtic instruments, learning how to play some of them, like for example, the Boren, while singing Northern Irish songs and maybe record sea shanties on TikTok. Now it's finally your turn to take a look at specific Northern Irish songs I have selected for you and discuss their linguistic and literary features as well as their potential for English language education in groups. But before we create any breakout rooms, I would like to post the task in the chat and also the link to download this presentation so that you can use this overview of pre while post listening tasks and skills you can foster. And um, yeah, I would like you to choose one of the songs. I'm going to give you an overview of the songs first. So listen to the songs and decide which ones you would like to work with. Oh, which one? Right, can you see the Padlet? Okay. So, first up, Caught Up by Dan Maggle. This is Belfast City where the bombs were no where the where the bombs were north and as children we played in the derelict buildings Paramilitary killings, green weight and orange, red weight and blue City divided in two by the peace lane Peace lane The youth getting caught up in the street cram Yeah Cause every day I burn my way it's all the same shit The same memes faces and all the same clips Let's continue. My song for you this evening, it's not to make you sad, not for adding to the sorrows 
of this troubled northern land. But lately I've been thinking and it just won't leave my mind. Tell you off two friends one time who were both good friends of mine. Of all the places I have been There's only one to fill my dreams The place that lingers in I know it rains, but it's always pretty Back to the friends that I can't take with me We'll have a night out in Belfast City We'll have a night out in Belfast City We'll have a night out in Belfast City, all right. I'll be on my way, leaving West LA at sunrise. Um, yeah, I've tried to include, include a variety of different genres and also modern and traditional songs. Now, back to the task. I'm going to post that into the chat. Well, first, the, the link to download the presentation. There you go. And the task, I'll follow in a minute. Right, so as you can see, I would like you to get into groups and decide who's going to take notes and who's going to present your results. Choose one of the songs to focus on and then discuss the potential of your selected song and take, take notes on the linguistic and literary features of the song, as well as the potential for English language education or the skills that can be promoted when using the song or practical implications for English language teaching like possible 
free while or post listening tasks or possibly even other teaching ideas. And yeah, please take notes on the Padlet so that everyone has access to um, your ideas and we can create a pool of teaching ideas on how, yeah, basically on how to teach different Northern Irish songs together. Um, I already made a setup of breakout sessions for six songs. Is that okay, Michelle? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so the first one, just um, that you know where you want to go to, is the um, in, in the order you listen to it. So the first one is Caught Up. That's the first room. The second one is The Roses. The third one is Belfast. Number four is... Belfast City. Number five was the Van Morrison song. And uh, the last one, uh, room number six, is Field of Ethanry. So you can, I, I start the, the sessions now and you simply decide where you want to go to. And um, when you use this song, for um, talking about Northern Ireland, or in the uh, twelfth grade English class, you would um, have to give them background either before you use that song or after you've used that song, um, because it makes very direct allusions to the Northern Irish conflict um, and how the conflict still affects Northern Irish society today. Um, so um, as regards the literary or linguistic um, features um, that we were supposed to pick out, of course, there are clippings um, and there's slang um, in the song. There are also metaphors like the green, white and orange and the red, white and blue. Um, Oh yeah, the clippings and the, um, like for, for example, cuz and running and the red, white and blue, yep. Yeah. Um, then of course, because it's a song, you have rhyme mm -hmm. and repetition, um, notably in the chorus, for example. Um, then as regards the skills, we thought that when you um, let the, students listen to the song we would definitely give them the lyrics to read along with the song because the accent is quite challenging um, for an English foreign, foreign language learner to um, understand but that doesn't mean that you can't include gaps um, for um, some words while you have them listen to the song. Um, as regards maybe a pre-listening um, activity, you could give them the first few words of the song. This is Belfast City where, and then they continue the sentence. And it would be interesting, depending on how much they know about Northern Ireland, it would be interesting to see how they complete that sentence. Mm -hmm. And it would also give us an insight into their expectations of the song. Um, and as regards maybe a post activity, um, because it's a rap and the the rhythm is quite uh, and the the um, yeah the rhythm and the structure of the song is quite simple. Maybe they could write their own little rap verse about their town mm -hmm. um, and perform it. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. Thank you so much for your input. You've come up with lots of ideas and analyses. So that's really great. Thank you so much for contributing. Um, yeah, should we go on with the next group and then leave the questions? Yeah for <laughs> the last part of today's session right okay um next group i think no one worked on there were roses but i think we had a group that worked on belfast right yes 
Okay, feel free to share your thoughts whenever you're ready. Okay, so we haven't actually talked that much about the lyrics itself, more about the activities and um, the skills and competences that you can improve. Um, but the lyrics is quite clear um, in terms of the pronunciation, but also the vocabulary that's used. So um, I think it's sad that it is for beginners and we think that's actually quite adequate because um, yeah, it's, it's clear to understand. And um, it works a lot with pictures home, about home and um, it's quite nostalgic. Um, maybe, can you share your screen? I ah, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't see what we actually wrote. Okay. Um, yeah, and we said that because of that clear pronunciation, um, you can improve their listening skills. Um, also because the grammatical structures are not that complex, so they can focus on what they are hearing and the speed is not too fast because um, it's a ballad, it's uh, like an ode to Belfast. So um, yes, this would be one point. And then the other aspect was the intercultural competence that um, you can improve uh, with the song because um, the students can learn how to take another perspective into consideration um, how other people relate to their home, um, to the place where they were born, um, and find similarities, but also differences, um, and see how do they feel attached to their home. And um, then in general, they just learn more about the Northern Irish culture slash Irish culture, um, because many landmarks are named um, then cities and rivers and um, in the video, if you would also use the video in, during the lesson, um, you would also get visual input, which helps to understand the storyline better. Um, and so probably they will be more motivated as well because they have more um, inputs from other media um, channels. And yeah, then, oh, sorry, thank you. <laughs> yeah, for the pre-listening, I'm, I'm trying to keep it short. Um, we said that you could give them snippets as you just suggested. Um, for example, three lines where it's about, I've been away now for too many years. I've read all the papers they told of your tears, though I've left you with a heart that's been um, torn. And if they read it, they are supposed to guess what the song is about. And we thought, that might be interesting because it could also be about um, a relationship or an ex-lover, but then they find out while they're listening that it's actually about a city and a home. And um, while they are listening, um, you could also give them um, a sheet of paper with gaps to fill in, um, despite that the text is quite short actually, uh, but still we think that would make sense. And then um, after they listen to it, um, we named some different tasks that we could possibly do with them. One being that you they could create a mind map or a poster where they write about what home is to them, what home means to them. And um, then you could also, what Amy just said, um, ask the students to write um, a song themselves, maybe a third verse, because it is quite short. Um, either about Northern Irish city or maybe their own hometown. Right, thank you so much. Also lots of lovely ideas there. Um, yeah, just a quick remark maybe, yeah, other than gap filling, we have of course lots of other um, tasks you could ask students to do, like um, maybe referring back to the first example, whenever you have slang terms, you could of course maybe ask them to tick which ones they heard and then guess the meaning or, um, yeah, activities like these. Right, um, we do not have much time left, but uh, I would still love to hear what the other groups <clears throat> thought about these songs. The next one was uh, Belfast City. 
And then we only have peers of F and Rye left, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Belfast City. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Okay, uh, since no one else is going to uh, uh, jump in. Um, right, so um, first of all, we um, noticed that it's also a very slow song. And there aren't as many um, obvious linguistic uh, features uh, at first, uh, but we still found uh, a variety uh, that being Clipping, of course, um, especially the hyphenated cause. Uh, we have a rhotic pronunciation from the singer. Um, some uh, unusual intonations, uh, like for example, for Belfast, uh, which is um, goes upwards with the intonation instead of downwards. Uh, slightly, this will probably not be picked up by students, we reckon. Uh, we also have uh, contracted semi-modal verbs like kinda. And as I already said, it's rather slow. We have a very clear pronunciation, which would make it easy for students to understand um, the lyrics. And we also have very easy grammatical structures and the vocab is also not really um, that difficult. Um, right, so this gives the opportunity for us to um, use the song for the improvement of the cultural competence because um, it's very evident that the singer is as well as the others um, referring to the unrest uh, in the past and how it is peaceful now. Uh, and also the typical weather patterns um, that being rain, obviously, you know, on an island. Um, so we have the history of uh, Northern Ireland. We also have a little bit about knowledge about the city. Um, I didn't write down an example, and due to time reasons, I will not uh, search it. Um, yeah, and it's also very evident that the singer or the um, first person has a very deep personal connection towards the city. Uh, this deep personal connection can then be picked up by the students in a, a post listening activity. As for the others, we also had the idea that they could write um, a few stanzas about their own hometown. Um, we also have uh, the opportunity to hand the lyrics out for the students as well, for easier understanding, especially if the um, vocab building isn't as advanced yet. Um, and also for um, also to make it easier for the students to identify um, linguistic features. And then of course you can also show pictures of Belfast um, as a pre listening activity to give the students an impression of Belfast first before you dive right in. Yeah. All right. Thank you for these lovely ideas as well. And I'm sure you've noticed by now that we have these, uh, these recurring theme of, the, of home and what constitutes home um, in the song. So this might also be a good starting point for intertextual analysis and work with several of these songs, right. Good, thank you so much. Um, let's hear the last group and then we'll have a few more minutes for questions maybe, and I'm also happy to stay a bit longer or you can always send me an email if you have any more questions. Right, last group. Okay, I go for it, right? If everybody of my group agrees. Okay, great. Uh, yes, so we had the fields of uh, Athenry, and uh, we thought the students put or the potential for the classroom is that students learn about Irish history, most importantly about the famine, about emigration and everything connected to that. 
Um, linguistically, on, on literary devices, we um, found a rhyme scheme, like in a poem, which is very common in, in songs because songs are more or less poems, um, whereas it is not a, a, a really traditional rhyme scheme, but we found something like F and Rye and uh, Fly and so on. Um, there were many or there are many motives of freedom, of loneliness, um, uh, also home, what you just mentioned, and we thought this song comprises basically the exodus of the Irish people, because they had to flee, because they had to starve or flee from starvation, and we always saw this uh, dichotomy between the crown, crown was mentioned, so the British, and that was associated with prison and uh, uh, something very negative, of course, and that all against freedom, birds singing and joy and uh, very positive uh, motives. Um, and the next um, thing was the skills. Um, of course, uh, students uh, learn um, or gain listening competencies, but also uh, competencies in interpreting. Um, because they have to decipher or um, find those motives and features. And we thought it's a great chance for intercultural learning uh, because students, um, we, we can lead them to empathy. Um, and it is this cultural feature. They learn about the impact of the Great Famine uh, because we discussed that the song was written in the 70s and uh, um, they still sing it. And uh, it is uh, something that happened in the 19th century. So we, we thought this is something of a great impact uh, still for today and also for uh, the relationship to the British that you can still find not only in Northern Ireland, also in the Republic of Ireland. So all of the uh, Northern Irish uh, identity, so to say. Um, let's, let me briefly say something about the tasks. Uh, we thought it would be nice to just watch the video, so the silent watching without any sound. Um, because uh, students would never assume that this is about such a sad story or a sad part of history. Um, we would then, in a second kind of pre-task, give them the lyrics and ask them how this all connects, because the, the video looks more like a festival or football or whatever, and... Um, just ask them and lead them into the song this way. We wouldn't have any kind of while viewing or while listening because this is distracting. So just make the students watch um, all of the video and get all of the idea behind it. And as a post task, we thought it would be great just to um, allow them for spontaneous reactions because it is very emotional, uh, the lyrics and the song, the, the, the music. Um, and then get them deeper into reader response reactions and maybe then lead them into more creative tasks, but uh, depending on your time, of course. I hope I summarized everything uh, that we discussed, KSC thumb up, and we have nearly run out of time. So famous yeah. last words, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for participating and also sharing your great um, ideas for teaching and analysis of these songs with us. Um, yeah, last words, maybe just <laughs> to be on the safe side, my references, <laughs> just to show them really quickly and the image sources. And uh, there are also um, links to playlists on the um, presentation you can use to listen to even more songs. And this was just um, wrapping up what we've just learned. So some of these songs I've just shown to you can be used to foster general educational goals. Right, so um, as I said, I'm happy to stay here for anyone who would uh, like to ask me any more questions. And thank you so much for your time and coming to this lecture. Um, yes. Thank you very much, Michelle, for this great talk. I think we all enjoyed it. Also the interactive part, discussing, getting really deep into teaching ideas. Um, are there any questions that uh, maybe are good to have in the plenum for the last maybe one or two minutes? Is there anything you'd like to ask? Please use your artificial hands if I don't see your faces. Yes, I can see a hand, uh, Frau Mingsoli. 
Yeah, first of all, thank you for your great talk. It was so impressive. Um, I was wondering how many lessons would you work on it? For example, if you um, want to further improve their knowledge about Irish songs and maybe just not leave it with one song, how, how long do you think it would take? Well, that really depends on what you would like to address, you know, the topic and also the skills you want to foster in your classroom. So what is the overall goal you would like your students to achieve, basically? And depending on that, you would have to come up with um, a lesson sequence, so to say. So I can't give you um, a definite answer to that because it really depends on what you want to do with them and what you want to discuss with them. But obviously there are um, lots of songs like um, if you want to work on the troubles, you can use several songs and maybe also TV series like Dairy Girls and have different lessons and compare to how the conflict is dealt with in different um, a popular culture um, artifacts, basically. Yeah, does that answer your question? <laughs> yes, I was just wondering because it's always so difficult to find the time um, mm -hmm. of the restricted Lehrplan. And um, I think it's such a great topic and it has so much potential. Um, so it probably you would agree that it's not enough to do it just in one lesson and then so, yeah i would definitely spend several lessons talking about okay. ireland and northern ireland thank ireland. you <laughs> yes and maybe if i if i can add something what is uh that was on one of your first slides michelle um what is happening nowadays in the curricula is that we are opening up and get uh, more beyond uh, the core countries or core cultures because we used just to teach the UK and the USA and these days um, the development is can be seen actually in in the curricular planning uh, that we open up for other anglophone cultures and one of them I think is obviously Ireland because it's so close it's in Europe it belongs to the EU etc so um, I think this is becoming more also seen in uh, the course books. Amy. Yeah, um, I have a question, but um, before, just like a little comment um, on your um, statement, Maria, it still sort of surprises me, though, that in the gymnasium, then it's left so late to mm. introduce Ireland to the gymnasiasten, because 12th grade is very late, I find. Um, and then the focus is on, or yeah, well, the focus is on the troubles <laughs> and then if you look at the layer plan for the for the new books it's um it mentions the troubles and brexit and then you kind of get an impression okay or maybe the danger is that you paint ireland as a country that has troubles always or um is caught up in the middle of troubles but that's just a little um comment that i wanted to make um but i have a question why um are you restricting it to Northern Irish songs, um, because of course the culture is fluid um, when you look at sort of the country and um, the border. <laughs> um, and you also have the fields of Athen Rye in there. Um, so maybe you could talk at something, say something about um, the restriction to Northern Ireland. Um, yes, well, as I've already said, I would define Northern Irish songs not only as songs by Northern Irish artists, but also songs about Nor Northern Ireland and Ireland as well, because of course you cannot um, separate Northern Irish history from Irish history. Um, I just, well, the focus on Northern Ireland really came, or, or I decided to focus on Northern Ireland because of everything that happened with Brexit and the hard border and, you know, the um, presence of Northern Ireland in newspapers nowadays, which is why I thought that this is definitely something that should be addressed in classrooms. And as you've just mentioned, um, the yeah, we should not only focus in, on all of these um, cons and the troubles um, of Northern Irish history, but also contrast that with um, 
a positive outlook on Northern Ireland and you know, to out to outbalance mm -hmm. this um, representation of Northern Ireland in um, English classrooms, I wanted to introduce future teachers of English to other sites connected to Northern Ireland and Northern Irish history so that they can use that to, as you said, um, paint a broader picture of Northern Ireland. And that's why I chose this person. <laughs> and some of the, of the bands and the songs were also uh, from the Republic, like uh, U2 or Cranberries, for instance. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, no. I also wanted to include songs on Northern Irish history. And of course, that's connected to Irish history. Yeah. Great, thank you. Are there any other questions? If not, thank you again very much, Michelle, for this great talk and also for your questions for participating. And I wish you all a nice day now. Maybe just the ISU people just stay here for a minute. And Michelle, of course. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.